Hi, and welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Uh, if you haven't seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell, actually right here in Westboro. But this is not about my day job. It's about Frank and Mary. Um, if you've seen my presentations uh, at the at, on cable or in local senior centers, you know that Frank and Mary have a simple goal. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And if that means they live in Westboro, they want to be right here. They don't want to move to Marlboro, where I live, or San Diego, where their kids live. They want to be right here. And so the question for this show is, if you're like Frank and Mary, who are the people you need to know? And what are the programs you need to know about in order to stay right here? Shelby Marshall, who like seems to know everybody, is, is my been my wonderful co-host. And we've been doing this now for like a long time, a couple of years, two, three years now. We're getting old time. together, Arthur. From back when Shelby was like a new selectman. Now there's a long time ago, right? Um, and so she finds these great guests. And, and today she's got some terrific ones to talk to you about something that you is an anchor of who you are and what who you and what you can do staying right here in Westboro. So this shows promises to be a lot of fun. Shelby Coom, do we have? Yeah, good morning, Arthur. Great to see you as always. I'm so excited to have our guest today. We have Mary Johnson, who is chair of the Library Board of Trustees, and Maureen Emiot, who is our very well-known uh, director of our awesome public library. So very excited to have you both here today. Uh, we want to talk about the library renovation, which is uh, a project that um, has been in the works for a while now, um, halted slightly or paused by the, the joy of COVID, um, and um, about a new program uh, or a new initiative, uh, the strategic planning initiative uh, by the library. So um, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Awesome. So Mary, I'm going to give you just a minute. Maureen's like old hat. She's going to get on this show. <laughs> Uh, she's please. on our show. Yeah, she's a regular, you know. <laughs> her, <laughs> we brought her on because she gets high ratings. We, the ratings go through the they were, uh, I don't know. I haven't met someone that doesn't like Maureen yet. <laughs> so Mary, please tell, tell the viewers about yourself. Sure. I'm Mary Johnston. I, my husband and I and my kids have lived here for the past 11 years. We've got three kids currently in the Westboro public school system and on a rare day, not home today. So that's exciting. <laughs> I'm a stay-at-home mom. I used to um, teach special education before staying home and raising the kids and I've been involved in the parent groups. And uh, when Shelby decided to move on from the library trustees, she left some pretty big shoes to fill and I stepped in after you. So it's been really exciting to be on the trustees. They're a great group of people working really hard to keep the library moving forward here during this pandemic. <laughs> great. So Maureen, um, you know, you've been working on this concept of a library renovation. Uh, I think I was like 10 years younger. Maybe I really was when we, we started this. Uh, almost. Yeah. Little, right, right. <laughs> um, um, so tell us, tell, you know, Frank and Mary, where are we at with this um, and kind of what's the timeline, please? Sure. So I will start by saying we actually started the planning for this project in 2012. So it really has been almost 10 years. Um, and that started with a needs assessment. Um, the trustees at the time were wondering if the library was um, big enough and offering the right services for the future. And our study with our consultants showed that the library was undersized for its current and future needs. And that took us down the road of um, getting a grant to do some planning and then eventually to a construction grant uh, because our state agency, the Mass Board of Library Commissioners, um, liked very much our plan for renovation and expansion and feels that it will meet the needs of our community for decades and decades to come. So, um, so Frank and Mary will have a fantastic library to, um, to visit and to use for uh, the duration of their lifetimes. Um, so kind of where we're at now that in, we were awarded our construction grant in 2017 in the summer and we were, but at the time we were placed on a waiting list for funds. Uh, the board of library commissioners gets a, an amount of money, usually through bonds at the state level, um, uh, that they can award in grants every year. But of course they can't award, uh, all 32 grants, uh, at one time. So we were waitlisted at number 11 in 2017. So in the time since then, projects have taken place, uh, they've started, they're underway, and we've moved up the list 
uh, in 2019, we landed at number four. So we thought we were in striking distance of uh, the top of the list to get our money. And um, we actually thought that in um, 2021, we would be receiving our money. And then COVID happened. And you know, like COVID has thrown a wrench in everything. Um, so what happened last year was the Board of Library Commissioners decided not to award any new grants. Uh, the municipalities that were above us on the list felt strongly that the projects would not be supported by their towns in the middle of a pandemic, which was the right thing to do. So they paused awarding grants, which um, pushed our timeline out another year uh, until we think we'll be getting our money. So um, while that's disappointing, that's not a bad thing. We didn't wanna be coming to the town in the middle of a pandemic asking for approval of a big project either. So um, I have a little graphic I wanna show you that um, kind of gives you a sense of the timeline that we're looking at now. Um, so first, what you see uh, at the top of it is the, um, the drawing. This is a very high level design, that a very preliminary design that the architects did as part of the planning and design process. And um, what our consultant at the state told us is that it's probably not gonna look like this at all when it's built. Um, the design will evolve and change, but this will just kind of give us a high level idea. Um, what will happen is the, um, the 1980 edition will be removed and a small portion of the 1908 building um, at the back part of it will be removed. We're gonna excavate down about four feet and we're gonna do a full three story addition in the back. Uh, if you look at the building from this vantage point, which is uh, from the corner at the Forbes building, it's the 1980 edition was a two story addition, which was our children's room and our adult section. And then there's a flat roof above that. So it will be a full three story addition and they'll design it so that the roof lines match and the floors are level from one building to the other. Um, we'll have a, a bigger new entrance on the Parkman Street side and um, we'll do some landscaping and uh, it's just gonna be like really beautiful and much larger uh, space than what we currently have. Um, so our timeline, uh, the, our best guess, best estimate of timeline right now is that we'll come up to the top of the waiting list for our funds in July of 2022. So once we're notified that our money is available, we have six months to get local approval of the project, which means we will be at the October 2022 town meeting asking for the town to approve the project. Um, the total cost for the project is about $23 million. And just like the school projects that we're all familiar with uh, from town meeting, we'll be coming to the town to ask for the full $23 million. That's just how municipal finance works. Um, we have to have the money approved before we can proceed with our grant funded project. Uh, the grant will reimburse uh, the town just under $9.5 million. So um, it's not quite half the project, but um, See at the, top, at the top of the timeline, public awareness campaign, library foundation fundraising. Uh, we do have a nonprofit 501c3 library foundation that has committed to raising $2 million towards the project. Uh, so between the foundation fundraising and the grant from the state, we have a substantial amount of the funds um, set aside that the um, taxpayers won't have to fund. So we're really going to get a gorgeous library uh, that will meet our needs for many decades at a really great price. So we'll be at the October 2022 town meeting. I hope you will all be there voting yes. Um, and then once it's approved at town meeting, we'll begin our design development. Um, that's where we'll further refine the design. Um, they'll, parts of the project will go out for bid and uh, we'll begin the search for our temporary location. We will not be able to stay at 55 West Main during construction because it will be an active construction site. Um, so we're hoping that we'll be able to find something that's open and available that we can afford that's downtown, but we don't really know where that temporary site is gonna be. Um, so we anticipate moving to our temporary location in the fall of 2023 so that construction can begin. Construction typically takes about two years for a project this size. So um, 
will be at our temporary location offering all of our services for um, the duration of that. So we anticipate it being completed in the fall of 2025 and probably our grand opening, um, our big celebration, our parade, our balloons, our searchlights, um, all the cheering happening um, first quarter of 2026. So um, like you said earlier, Shelby, um, you know, a long process started in 2012 and now anticipating completion in 2026. Um, seems like it takes forever. Uh, the wheels turn slowly when it's a, a big project, but um, will be just a fantastic resource for the town for, for so many years, for, for everyone in town, something that everyone can use. Well, I, I do think um, I want to do a lot of time for the strategic planning, but I want to make a comment that I think the, the one thing I hear about the library, and I don't honestly hear about any other building, um, not that other uh, buildings such as our schools and our senior center, I mean, those are open to the public and other people do use them. But the one thing about the library is that it's such an anchor for the community and it and it's becoming increasingly so. I mean, I you're obviously in the business of libraries, you understand it far better than I do, but I feel like there was, you know, there was a little bit of like, ah, libraries, right, social media, you know, soft media coming out and what is the future? I mean, this is like the conversation maybe like back in, you know, 2000 and I mean, the the need and the the purpose for libraries has just soared. Um, and you know, we've had you on as a prior guest talking about uh, the many different um, services that the library offers and and how it is a central gathering place for it's a community space. And um, so I'm very excited about the renovation project, and I know uh, it's it's needed in the town. Uh, to to bring us forward for the next you know 50 60 years so I suppose that's a piece of this where where, where the where the, the 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 strategic planning is happening because I know I, I just as an observation I, I come from far away Marlboro, um, where, um and and it, same kinds of questions have been raised I think we're actually going into construction on ours I think maybe well the beginnings of it I think are this year you know but I, so we've gone through a lot of this stuff and actually our price tag is very similar. I'm kind of, I'm very aware of this project, but this, this, this reconceptualizing of what the library is, you know, that it, it is, it has been an anchor for the past, but this notion of the library as being a real center, you know, a gathering place, an educational center for so many of our people, it's, it's just, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, and and the and the fact that you've that you've kept the library downtown, you know, is just so crucial to all of this. You know that it's that was it's one a, of our biggest um, requests from patrons that it stayed downtown. Stayed downtown, so a really vibrant part of a vibrant place. Yes, yes. So tell yeah, us about the. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Mary. No, I was just going to add to what Mary said in our um, in our last strategic plan. We were, when we were discussing the building and in um, some of the focus groups we did during the planning process. That was loud and clear. Uh, we were required by our our planning grant to consider alternate locations uh, as well as our current location, so that they knew that we had considered all options. And it was loud and clear that the um, residents want the library to stay downtown and like quietly between like us and the screen. We really wanted it to stay downtown <laughs> too. Uh, it's well, it's just our a really it's a really special thing that this was, building was built as a library in 1908, and it's always been a library. And I, I would have personally been sad to see it go somewhere else. If that's what residents said they wanted, that's what we would have done. But um, it's just such a treasure. Well, and I and you know our our I think a lot of the discussions around the master plan. Uh, we've had guests on recently about that. This idea of really enhancing the downtown village. Um, our most recent uh, parking study in the downtown by CMRCP says we, have, contrary to popular opinion, sometimes we have a lot of parking. So we might need to reconfigure some. We might need to address handy, you know, ADA uh, accessibility, but we have the parking. So um, you know, we we need to keep the library downtown. That's that's the plan. That's what the study and the, the survey says. So transitioning and in the interest of time. So tell us about kind of this strategic uh, plan. What is it? Why are we doing it? Uh, how can people participate? Sure. So one of the um, requirements for our 
continued eligibility for our grant is that we have a um, long range plan on file with uh, the Mass Board of Library Commissioners. So um, it's a requirement, but it's something that we would do anyway, because we want to um, have a roadmap of where we're headed in the future. And we want periodic input from the public. We want, we welcome input anytime, but you know, in a formal, thoughtful way, we want input on a regular basis from our residents to make sure that what we're meeting, what we're offering is meeting their needs. So we're undertaking our new strategic plan. Our previous one expired in 2019. And our trustees extended our existing plan by a couple of years because we thought we were about to go under construction. And then we thought we were about to go under construction and it kept getting pushed out. So now is the time. Um, and we are going to be looking for public input. We have a meeting coming up, um, a virtual meeting on Monday, the 29th of March. Uh, it's via Zoom at um, 7 p.m. It's just an hour. And um, our consultant will be um, taking participants through an exercise to um, brainstorm some of the, the current offerings of the library and the future. And it will be really interesting, I think, um, to see how the pandemic has affected what people will want in the future from the library. I'm really curious to hear from them directly what kinds of things they're looking for. When we did our building plan a couple of years ago, we were planning on you know, normal times and got really great, just fantastic input from the public. And I wanna kind of use the strategic plan as another way to get some additional input now. And then we'll be asking again when it gets a little bit closer to um, more specific questions about the building, but, um, but just the, the services in general, the um, things we offer for checkout, the facility itself, um, making sure that it meets everyone's needs and that programming wise, um, the types of events we offer, the, um, you know, any of the spaces that we offer for the public, like are those the things that people are really looking for or are there things that we should be doing differently? Maybe things we're not thinking about that they are. Um, that's kind of the, the short description of what we're doing and why. I think the Mary, timing, do you want to add to that? Sure. I think the timing really works out well. I'm even happier now that as trustees, we decided to extend it because I think the needs of our community is so different now than it was a year ago. And it's kind of eye-opening, I think, in the back of everyone's head. When we plan for the future, we're always planning for if we ended up back in a situation like we were a year ago, how can we better improve the services? We're really proud of the staff down at the library that they were able to stay open in some capacity, whether it's curbside or home delivery, but we can totally improve upon that. And so this is a really great time for us to plan for the future of what it could look like and how best to meet their needs. What did we meet for you successfully? What didn't we meet for you successfully and how we can improve together? Very, yeah, no, this is exciting. So um, uh, I know you guys will be advertising uh, more about um, the um, session that's coming up, but for those who are not able to participate, I, I, I presume our friends at Westboro TV will be covering it. Is that correct? Okay. I think so, um, yeah. Uh, and um, uh, will there be a, a comment portal or something? So if someone watches it and then wants to submit uh, comments, will that be available to them? That will be available through the um, library website. And I'm also working with the consultant to um, kind of either revisit our previous survey that we used, our public survey that we used for the last strategic plan, or to create one slightly different, depending on the questions she's going to ask, that will avail that'll be available in paper format at the library. And I'll see if I can get it at like town hall and senior center too. So sure if folks don't have internet access or aren't comfortable taking it that way that we can still get their input too. Maureen, one thing you might, um, and Mary, one thing you might think about is, um, I know that the senior center, they're doing their um, St. Patrick's Day backdoor dinner um, effort, uh, you know, in the next week or so. Um, so if there is a flyer, even to advertise that, that might be something that they could distribute um, to folks because uh, those, those numbers are increasing as the weather gets better. Um, and, it, and I know, um, uh, so when do you hope to get all the comments for the strategic plan? What, what's the timeline to wrap it up? Um, probably in, in the month of April. 
and because we would like to uh, do the writing of it um, probably May to early June, so we can have it. Our goal is to have it completed by the end of the fiscal year. Okay. It's not due to um, the library commissioners until later in the year, but we set our goal early so that we would have yeah. it done. Okay, good. good. Well, you're always welcome to come before open forum and the selectmen if you'd like to get the word out that way too. So. Oh, thank you. Thanks. This, this has been this has really been terrific, and I think the, the strategic plan. This, as you say, it's just an ideal time to be doing it because you're now thinking about perhaps a slightly different world. You know, you're kind of going, and a lot of people are trying to figure out that world now. As I think I mentioned to you folks, began the show. My my job is really to provide comic relief and keep time. And I'm watching the time, and saying I think that we, we're pretty close to wrapping up. But I want to make sure that we, before we do, you know, I always ask Shelby at the end of the show. So what's going on? Is there anything yep. of significance that, that folks need to be knowing about? We do this show weekly. And one of the reasons for that is so that if, people, if there's something immediate, people really can be aware of it. Shelby. The reason why we do it weekly is so I get to see Arthur once a week. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's she the truth. Uh, but actually, very excited. So we have a couple of shows uh, lined up that folks will definitely want to watch. Kelly Petralia, who has been our guest in the past, will be coming on to talk about uh, Westboro Kindness, give us an update on that great um, organization's work, and Kindness Week, which kicks off March 21st. So she'll give us an update on our next show. And then following that, we'll hear from our DPW director, Chris Pant. Uh, Chris is no longer a new guy on the scene, but uh, when you follow someone that has, uh, you know, been in that uh, seat for, uh, John Walden was our DPW director for uh, 30, 40, 50 years. I don't recall the number offhand. Uh, Chris is still the new guy to me, and uh, many people haven't met him. He's doing great work with the crew over there. And he's going to give us an update on things like sidewalks and, you know, big trucks and uh, um, what are his plans and visions. So, uh, and we'll continue our work on uh, the environmental series as well. So lots of interesting shows coming up for a variety of interests. So thank, thank you very, very much, folks, for coming on. Maureen, once again, thank you for visiting. And we're always happy to have you on. If there's any, you know, anything else happening, just let us know. Mary, it's I great sure what will. you're thank doing. Thank you. Thank it's you very much. What you, it's great what you're doing. I know those shoes are always tough to fill when, you know, when Shelby leaves something, you know, <laughs> so it's like a dynamo. Oh God, where did the dynamo go? You know, so I, I, I get that. But okay, I, I, time I to quit you, the show. You're doing a great job. So anyway, thank you very, very much for doing this, folks. Once again, the point of this show is to help you understand the things you need to be involved in if you want to stay in Westboro. You need to be involved in this. This is a big deal. This is a big deal, you know, so you need to be connecting with this master plan. You know, they're really making every effort to outreach to you, even if your technical skills aren't great, you know, you know, you, I'm like with you, I'm with you, you know. Just bring I'm, your I'm, ideas, I'm, right? Yeah, but bring your ideas and really connect with these folks. This is this is really, really important. So thank you very much for coming on. Shelby, thank you once again to these great guests. And we'll see you all soon next in the next installment next week of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Thank you.